Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the elementary idea that is the need for protection and the principles that is provided for protecting an environment in a computer machine. As computer system becomes more pervasive and also inconsistent in their nature, then the threat for protection becomes every time important rather than the previous time. Now in the ancient time on the previous days, the protection was done just by safely on the unmischievous users, user saving that the users are sharing the same logical structures like files and physical structures like hard disk or memory. So nowadays as it becoming a constraint to the multi-programming environments that sharing of this data are being done in a more reliable and protectable way. So the main intention of the protection is to use that the intentional violation of that particular access rights and privileges that will mean to be protected that data. So avoid this unintentional violation as well as the accidental violation which can be done by the user. Of more greater importance, one can say that the resources must be protected within an user. Now when an active user currently using in an operating system must use the resources only in the privileged access rights that is provided to it. So we can achieve this protection and one need of the protection is a crucial one for removing the latent errors that the interfaces are having while they are interacting with other interfaces. So we need to protect our intervention of this interface environment as far as possible because these interface errors or the latent errors on these interfaces becomes an extremely crucial one while we are configuring the network management of that operating systems, transferring data to other operating system or other machines. Now when this type of this operating system transfer done, then a healthy subsystem of that operating system can get infected by a malicious program into a virus infected malicious system. So we need to avoid this type of systems that is the reason for giving protection to the data and information inside that system. So while we are giving protection to it, so we must mention that the user first need to be authenticated. That is the first need of protection. If the user is an unauthorized user, then the message that is coming for it or any access right that is given to use that resources of the system is no meaningful. So first need for the protection is the user authentication. The second need is that the files and the data that are stored should be done in a consistent and convenient way. Say for an example that all the files that are stored within a computer can be accessed by any of the user of that particular operating system. So that the files are not secured and shared by any user so they, they can be modified by any of the user. So that the owner files which are for only the configuration purposes and now can be accessed inside this users which has only the read and write operations. So this should be done in the need of the protection. Now the third need of the protection is to protect the users of their own files and programs. Say for an example a user is having its own files and protection codes on that particular files. So if the protection codes are not there then any user can access to the files without granting an allowation by the user which is owning the file. So this need not to be done and that is the third reason for protection. So the providing protection information and environment to a file and its data to the environment types so that the user can protect themselves from other users as well as an important actors of the operating system. So the protection policy should be there to determine that what is the protection that need to be done on that user's file. So if it is a common file then it can be accessed by any of the user and if it is a private file to the user then it need to be protected in an executable mode. So that the policies can be changed from time to time and can vary on from application to application. So it is not the sole responsibility of the operating system designer to take care of the protection. The protection is needed to be done on the application programmer side too. 
as the application can vary between the protection needs so the application programmer or the system designer must specify that what are the protection that need to be taken care of while performing the application and that particular version of that application so in this way uh, the protection can be taken and it is very much important for these factors to be taken care of so if all these factors are taken care then we can say that our system is secured and protected by mechanisms of protection so the first one is user authentication news is the user files and directories and healthy subsystem maintenance and also the application programmer interference in that particular protection policy next we will move to our next part that is the principle of protection the main principle that is adopted by most of the operating system to protect their environment at from a computer's end is to maintain the least privilege policy while the computer operating system maintain the least privilege policy it is telling the users that only the privileges that is need to access those files will be given to the user and other than the user cannot access any of the files on that particular file system or operating system so we must first distinguish between the policy and the mechanism the policy is what to be done and the mechanism is how it is to be done so the first distinguishable between this policy and mechanism gives us the flexibility to protect an environment so even for an what scenario every policy will require an underlying mechanism to change in every way other than that a policy is fixed and there are many mechanisms to imply those policy according to their requiring need say for an example consider a security guard with a pass key to secure an environment if the security guard is securing an public area or a portion of the public area with that key then misuse of that key will be at its minimal but if it is securing only one pass key all the environment along with it then the misuse of the key the loss of the key theft of the key can be at its highest precedence because one key is associated with many of the areas so in like this way the access privileges work in the operating system there if one access is given to all the user then the mislead of this and misinterpretation of this access privileges will be done by the user so we need to follow the principle of least privileges that is accommodated by this user operating system so they are provided a role based access control or rbac protocol this role based access control enables that a user should control only in their owner or user or universe way to access control on that particular file say if it is the owner of the user then it can read write and execute a file if it is only from the other group members then it can write and write the files and if it is from the users or the universe then it can only read the file so according to this role based access control we can prescribe the acl to maintain a list that which user has which access rights or privileges to the user now this list of privilege action principle can be intruded by any attacker which can use as a stack and buffer overflow to buffer overflow of that particular process and reach the process management area so whenever we reach the process management area it will have a section known as a privilege so there the list of this privileges are mentioned for the particular user it then reaches by overflowing the information till there and then changes the privileges to maximum to get and file access in an intruded way so the operating system protects this list privileges that is that when a user needs to access a file a particular privilege is given to them so enabling of the privilege is done just before the file accessing and after that the file is accessed in that particular privilege mode again it will be disabled for the user so that no user can access have its all privilege right by default every user has to gain the privilege only before accessing the file so this can be maintained by the operating system by maintaining a separate list containing all the privileges that is now being attended by the user so the separate list in this increased and decreased between this rbsc that is a role based access control on that user is using that particular privilege so in this way we can maintain the principle of the list privileges for protecting an environment 
Now, computers implemented in a computing facility can give us this least privileges principles accordance that whenever this computing facility is done, only specific services on the network service or a remote operation that the remote patient is performing specific system calls under the specific services only. So, if the specific service is not mentioned to the RPC of that remote operation, then the specific privilege is not given to the remote user. So, according to again ACL and the specific service system calls, it is maintained protection of list privileges while the remote operation is being performed on a client server side. Now, if we come to the operating system performance, we can say that the least principles of these privileges is mentioned between these variations of operating system. For Windows, it maintained a maximum privileges as possible given to the user, very least protection about them. Comparing to it, Solaris has a more intended protection than Windows, but as it is a variant of the Unix, which was earlier taking a very little protection about these privileges, but nowadays Solaris uses a sequence of binary arrays, which is used to protect the data at its most. So the list of principal privileges is mentioned in Solaris at the most, then Windows, and then any other operating system. But Windows has more protecting environment than Solaris, but actually they are less computationally feasible than the Solaris one. So it is not about getting the protection measures, it is getting that of how this policy is implemented by the mechanism on the operating system. If the mechanism is strong enough, then we should not need to change the policy. Otherwise that we need to change the policy according to the system's need. So that is the goals of principles and protection. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.